a lot of gold nuggets. This has nothing to do with the technical part or strategic. I'm gonna kind of back the truck up and go back um, down uh, memory lane. I'm sure a lot of you guys saw uh, the movie, okay? King Richard, a lot of you guys saw that. But let me just kind of explain a story within a story, okay? I think this is very important, especially for a lot of you uh, little ones, or really for anybody to understand kind of how that all evolved, okay? And what, what the heck did I see? What the heck did I see? Because there was two little girls, nine and 10 years old, okay? Two little girls, nine and 10 years old, just like a lot of you guys, all right? And we went on that tennis court, all right? Nothing like this. The net had holes in it. The court was all kind of messed up. There's a shopping cart right there. Richard had seven chains wrapped around it. It took the guy, it took the guy like 20 minutes just to get the chains off, off of the cart, all right? And then when we practiced, we didn't, use, we didn't use new balls. He wanted to use old balls that were dirty and they didn't bounce because he wanted them to bend and dig them out. I got it, wanted, wanted to kind of, my cup of tea, all right, because I had a brand new box of Wilson balls shipped there. So we get on the court, okay, and I'm on the court with Venus and Serena, okay? Remember, they're nine and 10, just like you guys, all right? And prior to that, I had a young lady named Jennifer Capriati, okay, at 12 years old, she won the national girls 18 and under. Can't make this up. That record still stands since 1988. Some of you guys weren't on earth by then. Okay, it's beyond crazy. The greatest uh, female junior player ever to hold a racket. Okay, won the 18s as a 12 year old. And at 14, she was top 10 in the world. So my blueprint or kind of feeling for greatness was probably stronger than anybody in the world, okay? She had great, Jennifer had great preparation, low center of gravity, the ball was on a string, always smiling, love competition. So now I get on the court with these two little girls from Compton, all right? Venus was quite tall. She's like maybe 5'8 at 10 years old, okay? She was like that. And Serena was like, she had muscles in, even at nine years old. So I started drilling them, just like you guys were drilling here. Okay, and right off the bat, right off the bat, I said, they're not that good, okay? They're not bad, but they're not that good, okay? I've seen better, but the moral of the story, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. And you don't judge a book by the cover, okay? The cover could be amazing, the book bad, okay? The cover amazing, the book bad. So I'm looking at this thing and there's arms, and legs and they had beads in her hair okay they were flying off and i'm sitting there going what in god's name am i doing in compton california i'm sitting there going this is crazy first off i never go see someone they either come to the academy or i see them at a junior tournament but it was may and this guy richard convinced me to come to compton okay he said you won't get shot okay i didn't know anything about compton all right i just went there for the heck of it and obviously looking back, the best vacation I ever took of my life. So we're on the court for an hour and I'm thinking, well, maybe I should get a flight out earlier back to Florida. Cause I didn't, I didn't see anything. Now here's where everybody pay attention. Remember we were doing drills, forehand and backhand and volleys and, and there was stuff going every which direction. So now I said, let's play competitive points. Cause back then I still, played a lot and stuff like that, one of the better players in Florida, whatever. So me and Serena, same size as you guys, played against Venus, all right, point. The whole landscape changed. Everything changed, everything changed, okay? Instead of just moping around the court, both the girls were like this. They were popping the popcorn, double extra butter. They were moving their feet like, I'm going, what is this all about? And then instead of all this like sloppiness, like bang, like bang. I'm going, whoa, now the preparation got better. So the feet start popping even more. The preparation was even better, but this is what blew me away, okay? The ball, 
the ball would be over there and they would be there and they would still be running for the ball. They would run for every ball. I never told them to run for the ball. And Venus, I mean, she was like, uh, she was like this. Her nose was that far off the ground, running for the ball. And there's no way she was gonna get it today. But in the future, there's something in the oven called determination. I never, ever, and I haven't seen it to this day. Nothing personal, some of you guys, the best in the country. I never seen it to this day. There was a rage. There was a rage inside these two little kids that I never saw in my life. Now, that I got a lot of kids that try hard. I mean, Caprati was amazing. Tommy Ho, best, <laughs> best junior ever. Won the national 18s as a 15 year old. That record in 88 still stands today. All right, so listen, I've been there, done that. I, I just never saw that quality. Now, everybody pay attention. See, this is the problem right now. Some of you guys are hearing, but you're not listening. And that's the problem with kids, okay? I'm just telling you, if you're not gonna listen to me, you're probably not gonna listen to a lot of people. So right then and there, that doesn't mean you're gonna be number one. That doesn't mean you're gonna even play pro tennis, but that's a quality that's gonna help you in school, that's gonna help you in business, that's gonna help you in every, in anything you do, give 100%. But when I said game on, when I said let's compete, everything changed. Now, they should do better at drilling, but they didn't have a lot of experience. Right then and there, I told Richard, you saw the movie, this is in there. Come here, let me tell you something. You, it was more about Venus, because she was more mature. Serena was all over the map, okay? The nicest, meanest kid I ever taught. She loves it when I say that. Um, you got the next female Michael Jordan on your hands. That's, a, that's a, a basketball player. He's like, the best. He puts his arm around me and he goes, no brother, man, I got the next two. So, but now the, story, the plot thickens. I'm sitting there going, because Serena kind of had all the time in the world and she kind of knew where you're going to hit it, even though she was lazy. You can post it. Even though she didn't want to, there, she did things just like you guys. You know what I mean? Because she's immature. The brain didn't work. But she had some qualities from above. Okay, say with Venus, they had to be nurtured. So right then and there, Venus goes, Daddy, can I go to the bathroom? All right? Hugging, kissing, close knit family, just like you saw in the movie. So Venus goes out the gate, everybody pay attention. She walks on her hands for five feet. Whoa, this is it. Then she does backward cartwheels for five feet. I'm going, whoa, like the stock is just going like that. I mean, it's like, whoa. So I'm not only thinking these two little kids with the right financial help and the right opportunity and the right coaching, not only, okay, I could be wrong, but I knew I wasn't gonna be, not only could be number one in the world, this was the early 90s. If you were fast, if you were big and strong in the early 90s, some of your parents remember, you weren't you weren't nimble. They were gonna, I thought they could transcend the school. All right, right then and there, just because I'm thinking, well, one's gonna be 6'1", maybe 160, the other 5'11", 145, okay? I mean, Serena could do the split, I mean, it's like, but it had to be put together. One bad grip, problem. One crazy backswing, problem. Okay, the moral of the story. Obviously, <laughs> the rest is history, but the journey that we went through, but more importantly, okay, I'm just, I went on the record, said all this right off the bat, and I told you guys this before, no one hit more serves after practice than Venus and Serena Williams, not Roddy, not Sharapova, not Kennan, not Capriotti, I could go Mesquina, Pierce, I could go on and on, then Venus and Serena. So let's talk about that for a second. The greatest serve in the history of tennis. No one's close. More aces than anybody. No one's close, all right? She didn't want to hit the ball there. She wanted to hit it right there. And if it didn't go right there, she would keep serving until it went right there, every night. And that cart you see, they didn't use that cart. It was a public shopping cart where shopping is your pleasure, wasn't pleasure for their opponent. They would drain it every night. They were in a thousand serves a week, like shooting a basketball, repetition, you get feel. 
All I'm saying is you'll be the best you can be. The moral of the story, the moral of the story, when you're on the court, you love competition. And if you're all about the competition, this is a this is a takeaway. Because a lot of kids nowadays, you're worried about ranking and dodgeball. You want pressure. I knew right then and there when I saw that inner quality, nothing to do with me, that was baked in double crispy from birth until I came there at nine, that they'd be bulletproof. Listen, do they get nervous? Yeah. Do they choke? Yeah. But maybe not as much as the rest of the world. That's what greatness does. You gotta love pressure. You gotta love anybody, anytime, anywhere, the clinics, the lessons, it's all good. You gotta wanna compete because if you're not afraid to lose, listen up, if you're not afraid to lose, you're gonna win a lot more. All right, I'll see you guys at one o'clock.